that even if that finding could be made, that violation, <coughs> which can only be heard by the High Court, cannot go into the root of the charges before you, but is compensatable in damages. A small point of objection. Nobody raised the question of jurisdiction and determination of constitutional constitutionality of sections. Council is dealing on an abstract matter. My two councils say here they will shall follow that elsewhere. So we have we have not said this court has no jurisdiction. And we have not said that this court should declare the judgment effective or unconstitutional. That is that is the all the whole issue we are raising. So my good friend JV is delving into matters that were not raised by any of the defense councils. You know, just to, to help the court contextualize, when Mr. My, my name is Senior Mr. Omari rose, the first thing he told you is that he was going to give you a context and not the law. However, as he started, the first thing he told you is there is a fundamental issue of Article 27. Uh, that, that, that could have been in record. So what I'm basically saying if is... I, if I bring him clear, Article 49 that defines provisions for compelling reasons my, is my a constitution. Let me deal with the question. No, I was only finishing that to bring to perspective that the courts here, magistrates, look at Article 49. And they apply it. Yes. They apply it. Yes. But they cannot interpret it. So what we are trying to say is that, Your Honor, we are not asking for constitutional interpretations from you or a finding that is based or a constitutional finding. All we are saying, apply those ones as the law allows. Thank you, uh, That admission works for me. We will, I have actually finished my submissions on that. I remind this court, it did not have to come from the defense for me to raise a question of jurisdiction. We are just reminding you that all the articles of the constitution that were raised cannot be heard or determined by this court and we will wait to address them before the High Court. Uh, I am done with that question. And uh, Your Honor, we plead with the court to, uh, to take down that admission by counsel that they admit you are not the right uh, forum to handle issues of constitutional violation. Secondly, I now come to the question of the role of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. We have been accused for coming with unclean hands before you Learned Council, Ms. Bashir, <coughs> raises a contractual magazine, it's not applicable to criminal law, that anybody who comes to equity <coughs> must come with clean hands. Even, sorry, anyone who comes to equity must come with clean hands. Even if the maxim were applicable, the obligation to prove that our hands are dirty was on Ms. Bashir. She has failed to prove that our hands are dirty. In fact, according to her, we should have been the one to prove that we have clean hands. That's against the rules of evidence. However, Your Honor, this is very critical, considering uh, the context of this case. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, as established under Article 157 of the Constitution, has a role that is circumscribed. That role is clearly delineated. I 
I will tell the court one thing that that role does not include. It does not include supervisory powers over investigative agencies. Put differently, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions is not an appendage. Neither of the National Police Service nor of any other agency in the Republic of Kenya. Why do we say this? Question, sorry, sorry, Your Honor. Questions have been raised as to the right to liberty, the arrest of the respondents. But at what point do you trigger the powers of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions? The powers of the DPP in exercising the mandate under Article 157.6 of the Constitution are only triggered when an investigative agency has forwarded an inquiry or investigative file. The investigative file, the subject of this matter, was forwarded to the office today, and in record time, <coughs> around four hours, the decision to charge, which in ordinary cases is made within about 14 days. In four hours, we had made the decision to charge, and we are before you. You understand that to help of counsel, I know the office of the DPP is vacant and they might be shortlisted to contest for that position. <laughs> 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 Let him look at uh, Article 157.4. He will be confirmed as the next ODPP. He has the powers to direct the police. If he is admitting here that they do not have that power, then we have a big problem. Your, your no, counsel is deliberately misquoting me, well, and this I, is I, not I a think to his, uh, to his advantage. The powers under Article 157.4 of the Constitution is 